show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my review of the PS Vita PlayStation Plus free games for the month of October. Yes, I am doing the Vita games first this month. Normally I would be doing the PS4, then PS3, then the Vita games, but unfortunately I was away for quite a lot of last week, so I wasn't able to start playing the PS4 games, but I did take my Vita with me, so I was able to play those two games. So because of that, I thought it would make sense to do that review now so that you can see what I think of those games and I'll just do them a little bit out of sequence for this month and revert back to normal for the month of November. So in this video we are looking at two games. One is Hue and that can also be played on the PS4 and the other is Skyforce Anniversary and that can be played on the PS4 and the PS3 as well. But as I said, I played both of these on the Vita. So let's get started with Hue. And this is a sort of puzzle platform game where you can manipulate the world around you and solve various puzzles to move through the different levels by collecting certain colours or hues. And then you can toggle these throughout the game to change the background colour. Now what this does is say for argument's sake there is a brick wall in your way and it happens to be blue and you can see it there and it's in your way and you can't get past it. If you change the background of the level to that same shade of blue it renders the wall invisible so you can walk straight through. Now obviously this is a very sort of simple barrier to overcome at the beginning and it just kind of gives you an idea as to how changing colours works but as you go through you collect I think it's eight different colours in kind of this cave area and it sort of loops back around to the beginning and once you've collected those you get on a ship and go to the university there's a lot of talk of a character called Dr Grey to be honest most of the dialogue I kind of skipped over most of it but there's a lot of references to this character I believe he's trapped and you've got to kind of get to the end of the university and free him I haven't completed it yet but I have got about I would say a quarter of the way through the university I think or it certainly feels that way a good chunk but I feel like there's still more to come because I'm coming across new puzzles as I go through. Now in terms of the puzzles obviously I mentioned about the brick wall it's a fairly easy one to overcome other ones are sort of having to jump over gaps or spikes or navigate those by changing the colour so that you have the correct walkway sometimes that is hindered by something sort of rolling after you or coming after you so you've got little time to react Thankfully in those sequences when you activate the R stick to pick another colour time does slow down to about quarter speed so that you do have a bit of processing time but it doesn't freeze it completely so you can't use that to sort of sit there indefinitely while you make the best decision time will still carry on in the background and you will still fail certain tasks. Um, if you try and sort of cheat your way through it like that. Other puzzles in the game, there are a few laser beams, both to avoid and also to use to activate certain doors so that you can get through. These often lead to keys that you need to unlock the level's exit door. Not all of the doors are locked, but as I was going through I found the vast majority were, so you can't just make a dash for the door, you've got to try and work out how to get to the key first. Other different puzzles include what is basically a paint gun, 
that comes from the ceiling and that colours different things different colours things like boxes or the floor and sometimes you need to move certain objects beyond these without having them change colour so that's then a case of changing the background to match the colour that's coming out so that it basically renders it invisible so that you can safely get through various different puzzles like this all sort of interwoven together to create very very different level types and I found it was quite addictive because all the levels are quite short which is brilliant for a handheld game like the Vita you can kind of pick it up and try a few levels or you can do what I did and literally while away hours on this thing and the levels are so different from each other that the game never feels repetitive because after a little while you get new colours this leads to new areas and new challenges as you go through you would think that having more colours would make things easier but it doesn't necessarily work out that way because you then also get more obstacles and more problems once you get all the colours as I said you then make your way for the university and you're introduced to even more puzzles and problems and none of these levels felt repetitive it was brilliant I must have played probably getting on for a hundred or so levels now I would have thought and that's no exaggeration and they're all really really different from each other even though they're using the same sorts of mechanics it's very clever how you've got to kind of think well if I set this in this way that will let me through there but hang on if I do that I don't have anything to climb onto because I'm setting it in the colour that's the background and it's invisible so if I jump up to there I'll plummet to my death onto those spikes or I'll get hit by that laser beam or there's a laser beam firing at a wall and you need to get through but if you change the colour to get through the wall you'll get hit by the laser beam so you've got to pre-plan everything thankfully there is no life system because I died quite a lot of times but it just sets you back to the very beginning of that level as I said earlier there are some sort of chase type levels where you've got to get through certain things within a very strict time limit because something is coming after you those can be a bit frustrating when you make it so close to the end and you end up dying but it is very very rewarding when on the sort of tenth time of trying you finally make it to the door there is a real sense of achievement and then you move straight into the next room and it might be significantly easier for you and you clear it the first time although there is a difficulty progression throughout the game because of the extra puzzles and things it's not a case that the first level is super super easy and then they just get progressively harder and harder and harder they, they do sort of throw you a bone every now and then and sometimes it's just the way that you're thinking you just might see the solution straight away or it might just be really really fiddly and you know what you have to do but it's just a case of timing or positioning so all in all it's a very good game as I said I spent hours and hours on the thing in one go but again because of the small level design it's very easy to just pick up, do a few levels and put down again if you are so inclined. And it's just nice to play a platform game again. But instead of collecting rings or stars or something and jumping on enemies' heads, there's kind of a logical puzzle in order to make it through to the next area. Instead of just defeating enemies and getting to the end. It's a nice twist on that format. Moving on to our other game, we have Skyforce Anniversary and in this game you are controlling a plane and again you're sort of given a level and at the end of it there's sort of a mini boss that you have to blow up and on the way there are various different boats and planes all sort of trying to shoot you down as you try to shoot them back basically and the more enemies that you are able to destroy you're, you can then get weapon power-ups and collect stars as well and the more of these you get you get more points at the end of each stage and the more points that you end up um, getting the better upgrades you can give to your plane along the way as well there are prisoners that you have to sort of hover over so that you can pick them up just kind of makes you a sitting duck every now and then while you're being fired at so you've got a kind of dodge 
incoming fire whilst also not flying too far away from the prisoners otherwise you will go straight past them and the level does actually scroll although you have quite a lot of movement across the screen the level is scrolling so it is possible to miss some of these prisoners and the enemies as well and obviously the more of those you end up missing the less stars you can collect and it takes longer to upgrade your plane. Now all this sounds very good but certainly with the first few levels the difficulty curve that they've put on it makes it nigh on impossible for you to complete the level in your first sitting purely because you've got hardly any firepower and hardly any health so you've got to get through maybe halfway through the level first time and you'll just about accumulate enough stars to get a bit more health and then you might get say two thirds of the way through the level and then you get more stars to upgrade your weapons so you've got a bit more firepower then you try and go through the level again and you get to the boss and then he blows you up because he completely outclasses you in terms of health and maneuverability and speed and weaponry so you have to take those stars that you've accumulated and upgrade your plane again and then you might get to the end and finally defeat the boss on say the third or fourth time of trying and you think okay well it's a bit of a pain but it kind of served as an extended tutorial as I go through I'll just upgrade the plane however I feel I need to whether that's because of your playstyle or you just want to do it evenly and kind of try and upgrade everything but then you go on to the next level and you're massively underpowered again and you've got to go through the same process of getting about halfway upgrading if you've got enough stars and if you haven't going through the same procedure again and maybe getting halfway again and then three quarters of the way and then to the boss a couple of times and then you finally beat him and it just feels like a really cheap unimaginative and lazy way of trying to extend the game beyond its normal means you have to do these levels again and again and again and even when you complete them you don't get anywhere near enough stars to unlock the top level because based on the amount of stars you get graded a one a two or a three and obviously the higher grade you get the more stars you get so as you get a bit stronger you've then got to go all the way back to level one again to hopefully increase your grade one completion to a grade two completion to get a bit more stars to further upgrade your plane so that you're now a bit quicker or you've got even more health or whatever as well as progressing through the next levels and getting halfway and and to the boss a few times as i said before so you're constantly repeating the current level that you're on and also having to backtrack again and again and again just to upgrade your plane so that you can get further it's just so time consuming and so pointless and you feel like you're getting nowhere because half the time you're having to backtrack just to go forwards it's just really really lazy game design and it just sucked the joy out of it I honestly thought after the first few maps that I was starting to get on a roll but then the difficulty curve spikes so much from level to level that you've got absolutely no chance of even just kind of sneakily just squeaking through each level at a grade one each time knowing that you've then got to go back you never ever complete any level or even remotely come close to completing any level the first time you have to go back again and again and again and it's so infuriating and it probably wouldn't be so bad if they put you back in the place where you died last time but you've got to go right the way back to the beginning again and it just as I said it just sucked all the joy out of the game it was ridiculous so now we have buy try or fly so here are the two games in question as you see we have Hue and we have Skyforce Anniversary and Hue is priced up at $11.99 and Skyforce is labelled up at $7.99 these are the normal prices for these games on PlayStation Store starting off with Hue was a very very enjoyable game I'm looking forward to trying it a bit more on my way to work 
I want to get to the end of it. I genuinely want to keep going with this game. And I want to try it on the PS4 as well, just to see if it plays slightly differently on a console. I can't imagine it would, but it might be a little bit easier to play it on a bigger screen and to see the level sort of on a nice large HD TV screen instead of a handheld device. My advice here is download this as soon as you can, certainly by the end of the month and try it out for yourself, but I would seriously pay for this game, if, especially if this is your kind of genre, if you like a platform, you like logic games where you've got puzzles to solve, I really think you'll enjoy this game and it will be 11 99 well spent. And Skyforce Anniversary, yeah, <laughs> hmm. It's another one of those Space Invader type games. Here's a level, and okay this one is scrolling as opposed to the games that we had last month where you were just a blob in the middle of a screen and you blow things up as they try and blow you up. But this is still the same sort of idea. And yes you have the upgrade system, but that's basically there as a necessity to get you through the game and you have to repeat everything again and again and again just to progress. If that kind of Space Invaders type game is of particular interest to you it might be worth trying it especially as you can play it on the PS4 and the PS3 as well which is brilliant but if you're not even remotely bothered by that kind of game I would say Fly which is quite apt for this particular game. I won't be going back to this, um, I will be removing it from my Vita. I just don't see the point in playing through this game anymore, it's just not enjoyable in the slightest. So there we go, they were my thoughts on the PlayStation Plus free games for October on the Vita. If you've played either of these games yourself, please let me know what you think about them in the comments below. I will be back later in the month with the PS4 games and the PS3 games. Quick heads up with regard to the PS4 games. One of them is the VR Rigs game, the Mechanized Combat League game that I reviewed last month. So if you want to see what I thought of that, please check out the PS4 video for September. But for now, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.